Hey guys, this is Kevin Estella with Fieldcraft Survival. I'm the director of training. And if you've been following along in this video series we've been doing for Eastman's, we at Fieldcraft Survival are providing you guys with a number of different tips to help you as outdoorsmen, whether you're a hunter, a fisherman, a trapper, and you're in the great outdoors, uh, we are looking to help you become more capable. Now, something that always comes up in every single course that we teach is gear maintenance. And in particular, the question that comes up the most frequently is, hey, we know that you like survival knives. We know that you like bushcraft knives. We know that you have all these hunting knives. How do you sharpen a knife? Now, this is one of those questions that I'm sure someone is going to reply to this video and say, well, he's doing it the wrong way. I'm going to simply put it to you this way. There are many ways to skin this cat. And you'll find that if you speak to an old timer, someone who's been around the block for quite some time, they're going to show you one method. And if you look at the most recent blade show, uh, the most recent knife magazines, you're going to see that there are new sharpening devices that come out pretty much on a yearly basis. So what I'm going to show you are a couple different ways of sharpening. And I'm going to explain that this is not the only way, but it's one of many ways. So let's break this down into a few different layers of understanding with how you can maintain your knives in the field because there's an old expression what you're going to do is you're going to sharpen your knife one time and you're going to hone it for the rest of your life knife sharpening with knife sharpening we can look at it from a few different stages there's some equipment that you probably want to have at your disposal and i'm going to explain that as we we go along here most people would assume that knife sharpening involves just a sharpening stone and a knife. But the reality is, is that in addition to using the sharpening stone, you're probably going to want to use something that's going to do a process called honing. Sharpening and stock removal is when you're removing significant amounts of steel from your knife. Honing is where you are refining the edges. Now, before anyone says anything, I'll put it this way. There are multiple grind types that are out there. And if you understand the type of knife that you have, whether it's a hollow grind, a convex grind, a chisel grind, a Scandi, sometimes referred to as a short flat grind, a saber grind. If you understand how the edge geometry is supposed to work, it'll help you sharpen that knife and make sure that it's performing to its full potential. I'm going to use two different knives. These are two that I just pulled out of my pocket here, and I'm not going to fully sharpen them because they're already at a pretty uh, good status. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to walk you through the steps. Now, I use a Swiss Army knife pretty much every single day on my uh, uh, survival courses, my bushcraft courses. I use it all the time. Um, we've got an upcoming challenge where I'm only going to have the contents of a Ziploc bag. And you can be sure that I'm going to throw my Swiss Army knife in that Ziploc bag because it has a lot of tools I can use to survive in the great outdoors. Now, after any course in the great outdoors, I'm always going to have this, this smudge, this schmeg, sh whatever you want to call it, nastiness on the blade. There's the process of cleaning when it comes to knife maintenance. Now, if you have rust on your knife, you can use something like triple aught steel wool. Triple aught steel wool is found in hardware stores. It's used for uh, sanding, right? It's used for finishing metals. It also works really well on taking the rust off of blades. You don't need to have a giant pad of it like this. You can just carry a small piece of it in your kit. And if you happen to develop rust on your knife, it'll work well to be slightly abrasive to take the rust off of your blade. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more dedicated, for the process of cleaning your knife, I'd recommend getting a rust eraser. A rust eraser looks just like those erasers you probably had as a kid in middle school, but it has some polishing compound. And all I have to do is I just have to run my rust eraser over my blade. And if I have any of that schmeg, that nonsense, that nastiness on my blade, it's going to help remove it pretty, pretty easily. Okay, now you just want to be careful that you're not cutting into the edge of your knife as you're doing this, because this does have an abrasive. You don't want to make your knife duller than it may already be. Now, there might be those of you that are saying, well, I don't want to carry this. I don't want to carry this. What can I use in the field? If you go to a hardwood fire and you take out some ash, you can pound that ash against a rock, take that ash and use the ash as an abrasive to remove the nastiness that's on your blade. It doesn't remove everything. It is wood and you are polishing metal after all, 
but you'll be surprised at how much that ash slurry will actually uh, remove from your blade. So once I clean my knife, uh, the blade, if it's a folding knife, I might take it to the sink and run it under warm water. Uh, warm water, I don't wanna use any crazy detergents or anything like that. I definitely don't wanna put my knife in the uh, dishwasher. Plenty of knife experts have come out and said that the temperatures that are achieved inside of a dishwasher will actually destroy the heat tree to your knife. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run it under warm water. I'm gonna towel dry it as best as possible and if it's summertime or if I have the uh, the heat on in the winter, I might put this in front of a fan and dry it out that way. So that's cleaning my knife. The next thing I'm gonna do with my knife is I'm going to do the sharpening process. Now I'm gonna use a very, very small stone here. Uh, this sharpening stone is actually from a company called Fall Neven. On one side, it's a diamond stone. On the other side, it's a ceramic stone, okay? Or a piece of ceramic. The diamond stone is really used if I have a burr on my knife that I really need to get rid of. Now, depending on who you speak to, they'll either say that you're gonna take the tip of the knife and work from tip to heel, or they're gonna tell you you're gonna go from the heel of the knife to the tip. Be very careful when you're sharpening your knife as you get to the tip that you're not creating too much of an input where you're lifting the knife on an angle. Because if you lift it on an angle, what's gonna happen is you're gonna slowly create a butter knife with a rounded tip instead of a point. Personally, the way that I do this is I will work at one side until I can see a burr. The burr is a very, very fine wire that you're, I'm sorry, I'm gonna work it until I create a wire. It's a very fine uh, piece of steel that's gonna be formed along the edge. And if I have a flashlight handy, what I can actually do is I can look down the edge of my knife with my flashlight and I'll see if there's any shiny spots. And those will be the spots that I wanna give a little extra attention to. As I was mentioning, I'll work one side until I can create that wire. After I work that one side, I'll do the other side. I mentioned there are ways of going from tip to heel. You can go heel to tip. Personally, I'm someone who works in small circles. You'll know when you are uh, at the appropriate stage to flip the blade over when there's less sound. And how much pressure you wanna use is the equivalent of what you would use shaving your face. It's really not a lot of pressure. If you apply too much pressure, you're gonna remove too much steel more than you actually have to. So what I do is I work in small circles, light pressure, and by going in small circles, I'm actually creating a, a small convex edge on the, on the blade. Now, once I do this on my ceramic and I get my edge to where I need it to be, uh, I'm sorry, once I do it on my diamond, I'll flip it over and I'll go to ceramic and I'll do the same thing on the ceramic, again, listening to the sound. And I'll try to give you an idea of what it may sound like. And what I'm doing in this process, again, is I'm trying to create the wire equal on both sides. Some guys will insist on doing 12 slices one way, 12 the other. As long as it's consistent, you're gonna get the results you need. Now, if you're not comfortable holding the stone in, my, in your hand like this, you'll notice when I hold it, I'm only using the center pieces. I'm never running my knife in the direction of my thumb perfectly or my index fingers. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing that, I'm seated at a table here and what I can do is I can just lay the stone flat and actually have my hand drop below the level of the table. And by doing that, I can achieve uh, the sharpening that I, I need to achieve. Now, after I'm done sharpening the blade with a stone, um, and by the way, the same process applies to an ax, except when you're using, when you're sharpening an ax, you're probably using some type of sharpening puck, uh, much like this one that's in my, my hands here. It has a couple different features. Once I'm done sharpening, right, we've got cleaning, sharpening. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hone the blade. This is simply a strop uh, pad. If you've ever seen barbers in movies where they're stropping their straight razors before they go to a client, it's essentially going to do the same thing. I'm not a fan of flexible strops where when you roll the knife over the strop, it actually is going to uh, dull the edge. I like using my strop on a table like this or in the palm of my hand where I can control the amount of flexibility that the strop has. Same process applies. I'm just going to go back and forth. In this case, I'm going leading with the spine. Okay. But if you are doing a Scandinavian ground knife, you may want to sharpen or you should sharpen going into the edge. Uh, and then you can strop like this because the black compound is actually a cutting compound. When I turn it over and I eventually use the green, this is a polishing compound. So we've gone from cleaning to sharpening to stropping now. And after I'm done stropping, 
I can use something as simple as this uh, ceramic rod and I can continue my honing process. Now with honing with a ceramic rod, I'm going to literally use the weight of my Swiss Army knife on this rod and I'm just gonna run it from one side to the other, being careful not to run it into my fingertips because then I would have to call my buddy Austin to do a medical video. That would probably be a bad thing. It would make for a great viral video, just not one that I want online. If you don't have a ceramic rod, you can use a coffee cup for this. You can use the edge of a window. Glass is very, very hard. It is brittle and it does a great job of honing your knife. So let's assume that this knife is, is fully sharpened. It's been polished, honed. How do I test it? I can take something like a pen and instead of you know popping hair on my arm, which by the way it is doing, instead of popping hair on my arm, what I can, or you've, I've seen some old timers take the tip of their fingernail, right? And they'll run it on the tip of their fingernail or they'll run it over the edge. We're dealing with a sharp knife and it's not a good idea to point it at part of your body. I can simply take a, knife, uh, a, a pen, hold it on an angle and my edge should cut into the pen and I'll exaggerate it by using the back side of the blade. What should not happen is as I run the edge over the pen, it shouldn't slip down. So when I turn this over and I do it the correct way, you'll notice that as I run this edge over the pen, there's not one spot that is slipping off the pen because it's a properly maintained edge. The final thing that you're going to do is lubricate and store your knife. There are some products out there like this bear fat uh, that comes from Scout Knives and you can put it on your knives. You can use olive oil. You can use uh, different oils from the kitchen if you're using a knife for game processing. But just be aware that certain oils may turn rancid. Uh, you don't want to use like certain oils uh, that uh, you know, you're know you not going to want to eat on your knives. Um, so I wouldn't want to use like WD-40, which isn't an oil, but I don't want to use that on my knife if I plan on doing a lot of food prep. Don't leave a, a, a coating of that. But again, you uh, can find all different knife oils, uh, kitchen knife oils that you can put on your knife. You can store it and, and put them away. For a folding knife, you can use those unsafe kitchen oils, or I should say uh, non-kitchen oils on the joints, but please be careful not to let those oils drip onto the blade. There you have it, folks. Uh, when it comes to working with your knives, maintaining your knives, You've got to clean them, you've got to sharpen them, you've got to hone them, and you've got to lubricate and store them. The more you do this, the better you're going to get, the more refined your process is going to get. You're gonna find the tools that are out there that are gonna you know, definitely make you a better knife sharpener, and you're gonna find some that you might believe are gimmicks. The important thing is, is that you maintain a very sharp edge. Don't let your knives get dull. A dull knife is a dangerous knife, and make sure if you do let your knife get dull, that you bring it back up to a safe level of sharpness. Because again, uh, if you bring it up to that safe level of sharpness, you can simply skip to step three and four and never have to worry about sharpening again, as long as you do that for your lifetime. Guys, I'm Kevin Estella with Fieldcraft Survival. This is a little knife sharpening tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe out there. Go practice these skills and uh, pass along this knowledge to other viewers.